What's up, people? Welcome to another edition of the New Breeds Podcast, the world's best. Here I got my notes here. Brutal New Death Hard Slam Grind Thrash Core Metal Show. I am one half of your hosting duo, Jay Horsecow, coming at you not live, deep in the bowels of South Jersey. With me, I have my partner, Crime the Notorious, TIM Tim Anderson Jr. Tim, how's the new car? It's fucking great. It's not a stick, though. It's not a stick. No, no stick. No stick. No, no manual in this house. No manual. Okay. So what are we talking about this week? So this week, uh, Tim and I are going to go back to the well. So the first episode we ever released was a recording that we did uh, two years ago, Tim? Two? Three? Three, How many? Three. Close to three. uh, Where we talked about the big four of new metal. So first of all, if you didn't hear that episode, don't stop what you're doing and go back and listen to it because it's terrible. It's right, Tim. It's ostensibly terrible. Yeah, we we determined at the Fear Factory (laughs) show that that fucking episode was terrible and it's laughable and we need to go back and talk about this. Right, right. It is it is not worth the listen, except only to, to do Nelson from The Simpsons and go, ha ha. So Tim and I are going back to the discussion of if we had to create a Mount Rushmore of new metal, whom would be on it? Whom would be on it? So in the initial episode, my four picks were corn, limp biscuit, slipknot, and soulfly. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, <laughs> what were yours? Corn. Oh, yeah. Il Nino, Seven <laughs> Dust, and Mushroom Head. Oh, man. man so three years ago, it was like, I guess that was my favorite new metal bands at that time. But it's like when I listened to that, I was like cringing. I'm like, I think what we meant to do on that episode was talk about who the real new like big four are, not our big four. I think that's where we fucked up. Because I when so. I thought about it, I'm like, we should talk about who the real big four like really are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. that's what we're gonna we're, we're gonna give our big four again, but we're gonna talk about who really is the big four in, I guess you could say in sale wise and, you know, popularity wise. I think that's where we fucked up, but we just wanted to get the episode out. And hey, we'll link it so you can see how horrible it is. <laughs> it really, it's so bad and so old. We don't even have a YouTube video for it. So that's right. Yeah. But the changed the changed point of view, like you were talking about, Tim, that I was thinking about with this episode was. Who were the four bands that were the most influential to the genre of new metal, which started in 95 and ostensibly ended in 2005, right? Arguably. Yeah, they 10 years. So who were the bands that were most impactful? And I think we agreed. So Tim and I just saw the Static X, Fear Factory, Mushroom Head Dope Tour. Definitely go. If you, well, by the time this comes out, it'll be gone, done probably. But if there's still dates available, go. It was worth it. We talked about, okay, so we both agreed that Corn goes on the Mount Rushmore of new metal. So yeah. that's not even up for debate. Take that off the table. So who does that leave us with? So, Tim, I'm going to start with you. Who is your first pick that goes on the Mount Rushmore of New Metal? Based off the popularity of the band and how big the record was, it has to be Slipknot because that self-titled record is a fucking monster. Every New Metal kid loves that record. Probably 65% of New Metal kids, that is their favorite New Metal record. It has to be Slipknot. It has to be. I don't think they're new metal after Iowa. I don't even think Iowa is a new metal record, honestly. But it, ha- it has to be Slipknot. It just has to be. I, I would, I, there's no fucking arguing that in my in my personal opinion. I would agree. I think when we talk about influence, when you look at the bands that came out immediately after close fast follow on Slipknot. They played that self-titled album was very heavy, very aggressive. There were some blast beats. There were some grind parts. There was some insane drumming. There was there was a, a heaviness that wasn't really present in the happy-go-lucky Linkin Park, um, Limp Biscuit side of new metal. So when you look at bands like Down the Sun, American Head Charge, uh, even to an extent Dry Kill Logic, uh, that first Chimera record, right? I mean, these are bands that were much heavier than what was typically the Again, Linkin Park, Limp Bizkit, you know, milieu. Yeah. So I do think I would agree. And that was one of my other picks was Corn and Slipknot. Yeah. So what what we're going to do, though, is it's going to be the big five because Corn is an automatic. That's what we talked about we're going to yep. do. So we need yep. three more. Uh, okay. I'll go again. Go on. It's Limp Bizkit. I mean, you just see that from now, how popular they came back last year out of fucking nowhere, just in spurts of popularity. But that first record, actually the second record, I think Significant Other is where they kind of 
cement that title for me. That record was great. Everybody was a Limp Bizkit fan back then. It wasn't. It was a time where you weren't like embarrassed to be a Limp Bizkit fan. Because let's be serious. In two thousand eight, if you told someone you were a Limp Bizkit fan, you got they were shit like, what on. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. I right? mean, that nowadays, was gold it's cobra cool, and man. that sort of shit. Yeah. But Limp Bizkit's on there because, dude, you got to think about it. that Woodstock set. That's fucking prime time new metal right there. They fucking basically burnt mm-hmm. the place fucking down. They're they're still in 2022 last being year. Blamed. They were still <laughs> being blamed. There's people are still talking about it. number three, Limp Biscuit. So surprisingly, they weren't on my top four. They weren't. Yeah. Um, and I do think so, and this is where I kind of got stuck. Um I got stuck with they definitely introduced, I mean, they were the most rappy of rap metal. New metal bands, uh, Rage Against Machines is not a new metal band. If you don't, if you think new metal, Rage Against Machines is a new metal band, I don't know what to tell you. Stop listening to the show. Yeah. Um, they introduced the turntables. They were before Incubus, so that puts them first. Uh, they did introduce that kind of sneering, happy-go-lucky, middle finger to everyone feeling, which I think does make sense. Um, but I don't know how much there are not a lot of bands. I would argue that aped that sound and by ape that sound i mean they were they were uniquely obnoxious and juvenile but at the same time technically talented and kind of goof and kind of just all over the place i wouldn't say goofy and i don't know i just i didn't i didn't i took them off my list who i did replace them with though is the deftones and i replaced them with the deftones because Deftones did not make a new metal record after Around the Fern. They go into some alt rocky, post hardcore type stuff. They really they start defining their own genre at that point. Like they, there's nothing you can compare them to. They're just the Deftones. However, they were massively influential with the 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 stuff that they did with the 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 comparison of the soft parts and the loud parts, the quiet and the yeah. loud parts, the soft and the hard. Chino can actually sing. They covered Sade. They covered Weezer. They covered all this stuff, um, and they they covered this stuff live before it was actually put onto a CD. That the atmospheric, almost shoegazy type parts of what the Deftones did introduced that to a whole new world of bands. And then the yeah. fact that they kept reinventing themselves and doing things a little bit new. Hey, we're on this tip. We're going to go over this way. I, I would argue that they were super, super, super influential, right? They added a, a soundscape guy in the third album because they said, hey, he just makes sense. And it, and it makes us our, us sound more full. I, I, and you look at the bands today, look at stuff like Mood Ring, look at stuff like Loathe. There is an undeniable influence. And yeah, that's modern, but... I think they influence a lot more bands. There's probably a lot more bands that have aped their sound that will never publicly admit to it, but they definitely heard the Deftones and said, "Yeah, that's what I want to do." Yeah, and and if you listen to this, if you listen to this show, you know I fucking hate when people call Deftones a new metal band. But they, I agree one hundred percent with this. The influence from Adrenaline and Around the Fur is you, you can't fucking deny it. After that record, I don't even consider Around the Fur new metal. That's a that is not a new metal record. Whatever, I don't care. Fight me. Uh, <laughs> White Pony is called one of the best new metal records of all time. I don't think that's a new metal either. Like you said, they were defining their own genre, but you can't deny the importance of adrenaline. I agree one hundred percent. They are on there as well. Okay, so we've got Corn, we've got the Deftones, we've got Slipknot, we've got um, you've got Limp Bizkit. I've got Deftones. Who else do you have? Album sales alone, it's hybrid theory, Linkin Park. It, it's sorry, it just is. That record was a fucking monster. I mean, come on, dude. It's the perfect new metal record. It's the perfect production, the perfect songwriting. It's fucking sold a gazillion records. Everybody it associates new metal with Limp or uh Lincoln Park. It's just it has to be, sorry. So I have, an, I have a question for you, Tim, and I struggled with this one. I struggled with this one mightily, and here's why. You picked Linkin Park, right? Because they were they they got on the radio. They opened up a whole new, a whole new lane of um, rock based new metal. Um, they got away from it the longer their car, car the longer their career went on. They went from 
what was it? It was it was hybrid theory to Meteora to minutes of min minutes after midnight or minutes to midnight. Um, I picked a different band that was influential, and this probably this is definitely going to be controversial, but I'm curious to what you think. My pick for the influencing the rock side of new metal, Godsmack. Wow. And here's um, why. Here's why. Here's why. They're on Ozfest 98. Is it 98? 96 was non touring. 97. No, they're on God Ozfest. I think it was 99. I think. Or was it 98? One of them. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to reference it because I brought this up. I actually did my homework. <laughs> uh, it was Ozfest 98. Right. So Godsmack clears the way for rock stuff like Linkin Park. Godsmack clears the way for what we derisively refer to as butt rock, the stuff like Disturbed, the stuff like Chevelle, the stuff like um, what are some of the other rockish bands of that time? Be Breaking Benjamin. Right. They were they were the rock band that got lumped into the new metal world that influenced all the rock and AOR type bands, I think. And I was going to go with Linkin Park, but then I started looking at dates and timelines to say, okay, who was doing that radio friendly sound before Godsmack. And to be quite honest, if Creed had played Ozfest, I probably would have went with Creed because if you look at them, like they were in that same, um, they were in that orbit. It was Creed Disturbed, Godsmack, Creed Disturbed, Godsmack. And then you had Chevelle and then you had some other stuff. And I know we, we definitely have listeners right now screaming at their phones like, are you kidding me? But disagree with me, but you know I'm right. Who else influenced that whole subgenre of new metal with the rock and roll side? I, I My other guess was Stained. Stained Dysfunction yep. didn't come out until late 99. So I, I was going to say, it, for argument's sake, you could say stained as well. Then I was just going to say that yep. before you said it. I mean, 14 Shades Gray was fucking huge. Mm -hmm. People consider it new metal. I see your point, but I would have never thought you would say Godsmack. Ever, I, I, ever. And I'm not trying to be controversial. I went, I tried to find the, the Alpha Bozo. What is the first band that played this rock and roll type new metal that blew everybody, that brought everybody along? with it and they were the, the first band i went with hey i i i i guess i can kind of agree i just would not in a million years see you saying that oh i don't like godsmack at all they were on the one osmo so i i would i didn't watch them the year i i went the one year i think it was 2000 or 2001 where it was them and it was lincoln park and it was a whole bunch of other bands yeah it was uh oh one <laughs> it was this uh, uh <laughs> papa roach lincoln park disturbed crazy town well so so papa you... roach lincoln park disturbed all rock centric rock and roll centric on the side yeah. stage union underground rock and roll centric systematic which was a, basically a rock and roll band i think they were the ones that were signed to lars ulrich's label um drowning pool which is rock and roll and then the heavier stuff which was american head charge but slept not was on the main stage so that made sense pressure yeah, four yeah. five another rock and rollish band Right, they yeah, were on two thousand and one. True. So I guess I have a, this is a roundabout way of saying Tim Creed goes on <laughs> the new metal, not Creed. Godsmack goes on the new metal Mount Rushmore, and I will die on this hill. We need to Photoshop these together. This will be great. This will be so, a great Photoshop. So Sully Erna's on the on yeah. that Rushmore. <laughs> yep, with his with or without the bandana, though, is the question. It's got to be with the bandana, right? Absolutely. Where you can barely see his eyes and the ears. Go and then, away. Yeah, and then under it, it says "Go away." Yeah. That's fucking hilarious. His soul I was just gonna say that. He's a boulder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's your next pick? Um, I hate this band, but System of a Down. I thought about it. The the I know they came out a little later, but that band was super polarizing for the genre, and you can't really ask a new metal kid, and you can't really ask a kid in new metal who their you know five favorite bands are. You know, System's gonna be in there ninety percent of the time. Mm -hmm. Let's be mm -hmm. honest here. Don't care for them, you know that if you listen, but they're they're on there. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean I just is. I debated them. I debated them, but then I my, my my argument was yes, there's so many bands took influence and so many bands that like system. There was so many so many bands that that was their first entry into heavier music. Um 
but I my my counter argument so the two sides of my brain my counter argument was yeah but they're kind of really unique to the point where almost nobody sounds like them which I guess I can make the same argument for the Deftones too yeah they're they're so but so wacky right wacky is the only word I can think they're so wacky that nobody sounds like them yeah I mean uh, they're definitely in there for me though because it's just like, like I said I'm going off popularity album sales influential what kids still talk about these days has to be system. Okay. Okay. Um, so my last pick, I think is going to surprise you. Um, I was trying to find a band that when we think about the sub pieces of new metal, we've talked about the rap part. We've talked about the rappy new metal. We've talked about what corn did. We've talked about um, the wacky stuff. The system of down does. We talked about the rock and roll piece. To me, the part that was missing is the electronic piece. Yeah. Jesus, hey. Oh, I gotta stop drinking or drink faster. The band I landed, and this is before Saturday night, Static X. And here's why. Wisconsin Death Trip comes out in early 99, March 99. They play Ozfest a few times. Uh, they obviously pull influences from bands like Gravity Kills and Stabbing Westward, which were considered industrial rock bands at the time because um, Nine Inch Nails was ascendant. But I think without Static X, you don't get Crossbreed. You don't get some of the other bands that have keyboards. You don't get the industrial type sounding stuff. I mean, arguably, Dope has a little bit of that sound. I just went back and I said, as far as the industrial piece, I think Static X was the the Genesis block. That's a that's a good argument. I never even thought of that. To tell you the truth, I I, I, I really racked my brain because I wasn't going to turn in an embarrassing show like last time. But yeah, I'd probably do it with Godsmack though. But I mean, think about all the think about what we're seeing now, Tim, with bands like I mean, not to say they're new metal, but bands like Vane and bands like some of the other bands that are pulling in samples and electronics and you know we just had um on uh what's his name from graphic nature where he talked about how you know they love that drum and bass thing and they they introduce electronics as a, as an interlude I, i'm gonna defend it i think i think wayne static and his giant hair like because if you think about mount rushmore how fucked up that would look right he'd have to be like 50 feet below everybody else because his hair has gotta you know but i, I think they go on the mount rushmore you know what? I mean, I'm not going to disagree with that because, like you said, Wisconsin Death Trip is very influential record. I mean, shit. When you listen to it front to back, it holds up, man. It holds yes. up well. And mm -hmm. I think that you've seen that Saturday night where the crowd for them was fucking crazy. It was nuts. I had no idea there was that much of a of a fan base around that band. And I was really impressed. And I have I have gone back. Um, this only cemented my choice. I went back and I listened to the first two albums. I have watched a bunch of live videos and yeah. Let's yeah. Let, let's talk about machine real quick because you you listened to it. That that what do you think of that record compared to Wisconsin? I liked it. You could tell it was a step forward of maturity. Yeah. You could tell definitely. like they they uh, leveled up. Not even a step forward, they leveled up. That it was it just sounds um I, I don't know if I, I don't know if cleaner is the right word to use. Maybe <sighs> better put, I, not, I'm trying to find a word that says better put together. Like it's, it's more, more it's cohesive. Yeah. Like cohesive, tighter, even to an extent, not to say that the last one was sloppy, but, you know, because when I say tighter, you would imply that the previous one was sloppy. I don't think it was sloppy at all. This just sounds like more mature. This is a more mature version of the band that made Wisconsin Death Trip. At this point, they had toured. They toured the world. They'd honed their sound. They're hitting a groove together, and they went back into the studio, and they just created a banger. Yeah, I mean, Cold is the ultimate just cohesive banger right there. Mm -hmm. that, is, that song is one of the best songs ever written in my, I fucking love that song. Um, but the, you're, you're right on that record, like songs like black and white and permanence and shit like that. And you compare it to Wisconsin, Wisconsin was more of the raw industrial, mm -hmm. like bludgeoning record where machine is, you know, it's more, cause if you go to the record after that, that is just 
completely fucking melodic and really, really good. And then they go back to that sound after that. But like, you should listen to the third one and see what I mean. Like, what is that? Shadow Zone? Yeah. Shadow Zone is a fucking an incredible record, man. Okay. Um, I think all their records are good, honestly. I don't think they wrote a bad record, but you you see the progressiveness from the first record to the third record. And it's just like you could see, I guess maybe the touring and the popularity of them were getting bigger and they were maybe forced, not forced, but maybe they were, you know, nudged to like do that to gain popularity because back then, dude, like they were fucking the band, dude. You're right about that. I never considered them a, a big four of them, but they were the fucking band back then. And I you mean, can see I, it now. It's 2023. They're selling out every show. I mean, and just you look at, I mean, look at, uh, and look at how long of a career they had. They knocked out. I, right? I mean, they started in 99. The last album was 10 years later. Then you had the the new project, Regeneration, in 2020. Um, you had the next one coming out in November. I mean, I I I personally did not realize how influential they were. And so I went back and listened to it. And then I, I found all the pieces that had been stolen, not stolen, but used at the same time. And I, and we've all, we've had this discussion, Tim, that sometimes just, it seems like everybody comes up with the same idea at once. And a lot of this stuff comes out at almost the same time. So like with my rock and roll argument, right? Those bands, Godsmack, Disturbed, um, Stained, uh, all those bands basically started a Lincoln Park all around the same time. So it's hard to, it's hard to pick one. But I think I, I, you know, I obviously Godsmack was the one that I picked, but there was a lot of things floating around in the ether that everybody kind of pulled in at once. And just yeah. Static X is the one that I think just resonated most. You, you know what else is super impressive? They they draw a sellout, basically a sellout headlining tour. And the fucking singer isn't even alive anymore. Uh, that's the shit that's crazy to me. Yeah, People... but he nails those vocals. Yeah, he I don't nails fuck what those vocals. Says. That's fucking Edsel. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. I I compare his guitar playing the dope and then watch it in static. It's the same shit. He plays his his arm is the same exact way. His elbows the same way. His riff hands the same way. Yeah. It's fucking Edsel. I don't care what anyone says. And I mean, I'm good for them to keep up the mystery, right? Because it does kind of ruin it when the mystery is discovered. But the whole he wears the mask with the hair and light up eyes, and I mean. Dude, I, I was really happy with that stage show. Like, I really was happy. And he nails the vocals. He nails the part. Yeah, I I, I mean, it's not like we could talk to him about it because he's going to deny it. But, like. Right, because yeah, we I don't mean, have enough listeners, but that's okay. I would love to get Tony on and, and ask him about if he thinks maybe they would be considered a big four band. I wonder what he would say. That would be an interesting conversation. So, talking of, is there anybody left, Tim? No. Okay. So so we landed on corn, deftone, slipknot, Lincoln Park, Static X, and Godsmack. My God, there's gonna be people so mad at me. Um whom if we had if I had to say Tim below the big four is gonna be another Mount Rushmore. And it's just five heads. And it's the bands that amazingly influence new metal, even though they might not have been a new metal band. Hmm. Or maybe they did one album that was new metal and then moved on to something different. Who goes on that Mount Rushmore? So bands who are not new metal but influenced new metal. Well, so let's do let's do two. Let's do first bands that are not new metal that influence new metal. Okay. Well, obviously it's going to be Faith No More. Okay. Uh, obviously, right. Um, I. <sighs> I hate when people say it like you do, but it's got to be rage because yep. I mean you got the 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 funk parts and the the rap metal parts in there, so obviously yeah them. Ugh, man, that's hard, dude. Uh, it's hard. I got answer. an easy one for you, Fear Factory. Well, oh yeah, the yeah, manufacturer yeah. influenced a shit ton of electric, a heavier electronically tinged new metal bands. Yeah, spine yeah, okay. shank most spine shank most obviously, but again, the stuff like American Head Charge, you don't get slipknot without demanufacture. True. You don't. True. Okay. And one more. Hmm. That's hard, man. What do you think? This is gonna be a really weird one because I was really thinking about this. And it's because their catalog is so bananas. And are, all are you gonna say place. far? 
No. Okay. No. KMFDM. Oh, okay. And here's and here's my here was my thinking. You tell me if this makes sense. So if you go all the way from Angst to say Extort, which is the new metal years, right? In that time, they go from a kind of a dancey band, right? With um Juke Joint Jezebel. They did a lot of like dancey year type stuff, that four in the floor rhythm. They introduced crunchy guitars, they introduced um pretty good drumming, female vocals with Lucia Cifarelli. Um the samples and it's just they were so unique i i look at the other bands that came out of the new metal years that were also amazingly bizarre and unique they must have looked at kmfdm right sasha kanishko and you have nash who was this six foot seven bald guy in platform boots carrying around like a keytar right like wearing yeah. a mini skirt they were so ahead of their time and so unique they definitely left a um, an indelible stamp on new metal by how unique they actually were. Well, it, I mean, in that argument, you could say skinny puppies there because in the nineties, they were doing mm -hmm. similar shit, but you know what? Now that you bring this up and maybe think stabbing westward, you know what? I was just going to right after I made my argument, I was thinking either stabbing westward gravity kills. Yep. Yeah. 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 Them too. Yeah. Yeah. We can add both of them. Yeah. Stabbing westward. I mean, blister that record is or it has, if you really wanted to say it, it has elements of new in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, what and that was, was that? what 95, 95, 95 96? Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the records before that, what was the first one? Was it just self? I can't remember their records, what they're called. I know, I know Blister, obviously, because that's yeah, a great it's, record. It, Wither, Blister, Burn, Peel. What was the first one? Because the first one was surprisingly good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, is it self titled? On God. On God. That's a fucking great record. Yeah. Nope. Yep. What's after Ungod? After Ungod. So Ungod was 94. Okay. And that, uh, was there a big single on that? Uh, Violent Mood Swings. No? No, it was a cover. Control Light. And then after that was Wither, Blister, Burn, and Peel. Then it was Darkest Days. Darkest Days is their most rock record. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you're right. As that is, that is as, torn apart on it, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. So that's, like as, a, that's like a straight punk rock song. As far as industrial influence yeah 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 i would agree man stabbing I mean, yeah yeah now that you say km yeah yeah i agree i didn't even i didn't even how do you i wouldn't even have thought of that if you did say it. it they're they're so they're another band where they're you call them industrial but that's almost a lazy descriptor yeah right it almost is a lazy descriptor well, um i guess you could say then if you really want to get into it you could really say any christ superstar would be in there yeah, Marilyn Manson is definitely one of those adjacent bands that you could argue had influence. Um, Broken. Yeah, yeah, Nice Nails. Um, the one band that I really like, but I don't think they influenced new metal at all because they were way closer to the the rock and roll type side was God Lives Underwater. Sure. His Empty was came out at that time. That was a 95 album. Life in the So-Called Space Age, I think, was 98. Um, they were more of that electronic type stuff, but yeah, an Ozfest would have done them well. Would have done yeah, them well. absolutely. Yeah, it's just a I shame mean, it didn't work out. Yeah, yeah, some pretty good arguments there. Because I, I'm, I'm glad you thought. I'm glad you thought of asking that question because that's something that we probably should have talked about, and it's gonna it'll make people be like, wait a minute, how about this band? Because I like when people add into that. Right, right. The the yes ands on the in the comments and stuff. Yeah, that's that's the conversation that we're looking for. Who do we forget? Who do we miss? I mean, I mean, somebody could probably somebody out there right now is yelling at their head unit saying, "How could you guys forget Godflesh?" Yeah. Or how could you guys forget? I don't know who else was around at the time, right? Like early, I don't know, early Sepultura, right? Come on. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. So let let's do this, Tim. One last one last set of questions. One last brush more. Now that we built two. The fourth is four bands that created a new metal album. They they either they, that they started as new metal and then move on to other things, but that original album, even though most of these bands probably will never play that that shit live, is sickeningly important to the new metal scene. I'll pass out of existence without a doubt. Uh huh. That was one of mine. Um, dysfunction. Mm hmm. Um, shit. Mm. 
science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100. So who's left? Hmm. What are we going by a certain year? No, no. It's just bands that that put out an album. That album was solidly considered new metal. It influenced a whole bunch of other bands. And then they left that sound behind and went in a totally different direction immediately after. I, I so you got so Stain, hate- you got Incubus, you've got Chimera. Who else? Who's the fourth? I would so hate to say Digimortal. I would so hate to say that. Mm, no. uh, that's not a new metal No, No, because that was them trying to, the studio said, make me an album that sounds like this. And then Roadrunner said, okay. Uh, uh, Dino and Fear Factory said, okay, that's what you want it to sound like? We'll make it. We'll make a whole we'll album. Ma- we'll make the best version of that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't think of the fourth one, dude. Do you have a, any ideas? Mm-mm. I mean, you're looking at bands that, I mean... You're looking at bands that the first album was arguably new metal, and the second album arguably really wasn't. I'm not going to say Diablos. No, no. Um, it, it's not Crazy Town. It's no. not Ultra Spank. It's Mm-mm. not... I mean, Mudvayne? That second album isn't nearly like the first. It no, is... the second album I don't think is new at all. So yeah, Mudvayne yeah, well... then. Let's go Mudvayne because LD50 was huge. Yeah. So I Mudvayne. mean, they had all the aesthetics in that, you know? Yeah. This, this is going to be one hell of a photo shop we're going to put together for this episode cover. Yeah, okay. Know. So we're going with Incubus, Chimera, Mudvayne, and who was the fourth? Oh, um, how do we forget that fucking Shit. quick? Uh, Same again. You had Pass Out of Existence by Chimera. We had Science yep. by Incubus. We had LD50 by Mudvayne. And how the fuck do we forget to say old Jesus fucking Christ. people, man? Yes, man. I'm three beers in already. I thought was we're gonna have to post. Uh, damn. Uh, we got three separate wars. What's left, Tim? I can't think of the fucking band. We do. Oh, uh, dysfunction stained. Ah, stained. So we got Aaron Lewis, we got Brandon Boyd. You got full dreadlocks, Brandon Boyd. Shaved head, Aaron Lewis, not country rock. Trump voter, Aaron Lewis. You've got, I I think you put Mark Hunter with the long hair, the chubby yeah. Mark Hunter. The dreads, and yep. then uh And then who was the fourth that we picked? Uh, Chad, Chad Gray. Do we do Chad or do we do Gerg with the print the bugles on his face? It's got to yeah. be the guy with the bugles on his yeah, face. Let's put, right? let's put, yeah, let's put Berber ding in there. <laughs> Good point. All right, so there you go. Now we've got the we've got the Mount Rushmore of new metal. We've got the Mount Rushmore of new metal influence, and we've got the um, Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore of, of new metal hit and runs. Yeah, there you go, hit and run, definitely. Okay. All right. What what else do we got, Tim? Do we got anything else? I want to put this one to bed. Now to put it to bed. Let's get out of here before we embarrass ourselves even more and people <laughs> call us old and. Fucking out of touch. We are old. We are old. Hey, but we made it to like midnight on Saturday. It's impressive. All right. So <laughs> You're right. find us at Newbreed underscore podcast on both Instagram and Twitter, Newbreed Podcast at gmail.com for all your uh, comments, questions, or complaints. Find us on our Facebook group. There is quite a hell of a conversation going on right now. We have all sorts of bands coming out of the woodwork. So find us there. And lastly, you can always check us out at r slash new metal. Tim and I are usually logged in under the New Breed account and heckling somebody. What was the what was the hot take I saw the other day? That I definitely pissed somebody off. I told them to delete this. This is this is offensive. Um, somebody somebody put up something really ridiculous, and I fucking tortured them on that too. I just forget what it was too. Oh, uh, I forget what it was. Somebody po- somebody posted something, and it was completely just it was fucking it was horrible, nonsensical. I, told, I think it's the same one where I said that's the worst take I've ever seen in my life. Delete that right now. <laughs> and it did get deleted because he got shit on so bad. Now I forget uh, what it was. And it was fucking horrific. It was the worst take I've ever seen in my life. What was the Jesus that you got? You should thinking? go on Reddit right now and we're gonna I'll talk while you're doing that. Go riff, on Reddit. Riff. I'm gonna find it. Yep. So go on Reddit and then you just I guess you could just look at the the notification things, but mm-hmm. somebody put up something so fucking ridiculous, I I was fucking appalled at it. And I'm gonna go on and look too while we're talking. Because if you go on Reddit, I think you can go back in and look at notification stuff. Yeah, but God damn, it was now, horrible. And what did I see where I was like, yo, delete this. This is terrible. 
<laughs> was it the tough guy? New- oh, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Man Thing by the band Kiss It Goodbye. What? Does, and then somebody said, does that count as new metal? And I reply with, not even fucking close, delete this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking kiss it goodbye? Kiss it goodbye, Tim Singer, Keith what? Hawkins, ex-dead guy. Oh my god, dude. Okay, I guess botch is new metal then, too. I mean, hey, whatever, do your thing, but it's not, no, please stop. Please stop. It's like when somebody... Uh, I love Orion, but he tried to tell me VOD was new metal. I was going to I was going to get in the car, drive to Florida to find him and choke him out on the episode. Right. There'd be like a 12 hour window, be like a 19 hour episode of me driving down there. Um, and it's just you in his bedroom fucking <laughs> choking him like Homer and Bart Simpson. <laughs> and his head's bouncing around. All right, everybody, we're getting out of here. Thanks for tuning in once again. Thanks for humoring a couple of old guys yapping about new metal. So until next time, this is the new breed saying peace later.